For some of you, it might be weird to think of alcohol as a drug. It's so well integrated in our world. You hear about it in songs, see it in movies and drink it maybe in social activities. It's so well integrated and embraced. It might be weird to think about the dangers of this substance. And well, in fact, it can be very dangerous, especially when consumed over a long period of time or when overconsumed. So in today's video, we will focus on the origin of alcohol, the way it travels through our body and the effects it can have on our health. We will cover that and much, much more. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information as the purpose of this video is to medically educate you so you can make healthier decisions. Let's get learning. So let's start at the beginning, the origin of alcohol. And it might not surprise you that the usage of alcohol is almost as old as the recorded history of time. We need to go all the way back 7,000 years before Christ in the northern parts of current China. There, the first evidence of alcohol consumption has been found. If we go a little further down the timeline, winemaking dates back to about 6,000 before Christ. And for those of you wondering, the first signs of beer brewing date back to 600 before Christ in the current Egypt. So beer brewing is a much more recent human invention than winemaking. Through the years, alcohol has been prohibited by multiple countries, most notably the prohibition from 1920 till 1933 in the United States. In addition, the production, sale and consumption of alcohol is still forbidden in several countries with a majority of Muslim population. For example, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia and much, much more. In other countries, alcohol remains fully legal and available. However, its sales are often regulated. For instance, some countries have a minimum legal age to purchase or consume alcohol. There are bans on public intoxication, it's outlawed to drink and drive, and there are excise duties which need to be paid when buying alcohol. Which brings us to alcohol itself. And did you know that there are multiple types of alcohol, like ethanol, methanol, isopropanol, and isopropyl? Of those, ethanol is the only type of alcohol used for recreational purposes. It's found as the active substance in beer, wine, and distilled spirits. The other types of alcohol are significantly more toxic and can quickly cause serious harm. For example, two to three teaspoons of methanol can have fatal consequences. So please do not consume any other types of alcohol. Now, regular viewers of the channel might have seen my previous videos on cocaine, weed, or amphetamines. But the number of people using these drugs are peanuts compared to the usage of alcohol. In the United States alone, about 62% of all adults have used alcohol in the last two years. To put that into perspective, we're talking 6.2 liters of pure alcohol per person per year. That is massive. Unfortunately, this is not without risk, as about 3 million people have died globally in 2016 due to harmful use of alcohol. But more on that later. Before we will cover the impact alcohol can have on your health, it's important that you know how alcohol works and how you actually get drunk. And of course, this all starts with drinking alcohol. When you drink alcohol, it's absorbed into the bloodstream by your tongue, the mucosal lining of your mouth, your stomach, and your small intestines. Fun fact, as you might know, and as you might already do, eating food before you consume alcohol inhibits the absorption of alcohol, as the food will fill up the stomach and cover the stomach lining. This can physically obstruct the alcohol from coming into contact with your stomach, preventing absorption. So eating a huge meal before a night out does actually help. Now let's say the alcohol is absorbed, then it enters your bloodstream and starts to circulate around and around through your whole body, which takes about 15 to 45 minutes, which is the time it takes before you can feel the effects of the drink you drank. From the bloodstream, alcohol penetrates all tissues, except bone and fat. This explains why your body composition plays an important role in your tolerance for alcohol. If you have a lot of body fat, the alcohol which you drink will be distributed equally over the other tissue, the lean body tissue, which means a higher concentration of alcohol in these tissues. Other important factors which can determine the effect of alcohol on your body are sex, age, weight, amount of alcohol consumed, the time in which you consume this alcohol, and the ability of your liver to produce alcohol dehydrogenase enzymes. 
About 10% of the alcohol you consume will be eliminated through your breath, sweat or urine, which leaves the other 90%, which will be eliminated or detoxified by your liver. Liver cells are the ones which produce the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, which breaks down alcohol into ketones at a rate about 0.015 grams per 100 milliliter per hour. And this process, the breakdown of alcohol, cannot be sped up. So it's medically impossible to speed up your recovery from the alcohol usage. Exercise won't help you, caffeine won't help you, as your liver cells can only do so much. In contrary, it can only be slowed down further, as your liver can only do so much. For example, if you're using prescription medicine, illicit drugs, or if you have liver damage, then your liver slows down even further. Now back to the alcohol you consume. It is circulating your body, and because it's such a small molecule, can also pass the blood-brain barrier, entering your central nervous system. There, alcohol can bind and activate GABA receptors. GABA is a neurotransmitter, which is a chemical messenger in your brain, and mostly has an inhibiting effect. So stimulating a GABA receptor usually creates a suppressing effect in the involved brain pathways. Alcohol can also bind to the NMDA receptor. This leads to a lower concentration of the stimulating neurotransmitter glutamate. In addition, alcohol does increase the concentration of the neurotransmitters dopamine and serotonin. Together, the changes in these neurotransmitters cause the stimulating as well as the inhibiting effects drinking alcohol might have. For example, the increased levels of dopamine directly stimulate the reward centers in our brains. This causes the enjoyable feeling while drinking your first few glasses. Which brings us to an important term. Blood alcohol level, BAC. This is the amount of alcohol in your blood coming from drinking alcoholic beverages. It can range from 0%, no alcohol, to 0.4%, which is a potentially fatal level. If you don't know, this explains the reason why a beer glass is usually bigger than a wine glass and a wine glass is bigger than a shot glass. They all are designed as standard drinks to contain equal amounts of alcohol, namely 10 grams of alcohol, so you are better able to dose the alcohol you're consuming. So let's do a little math here. Someone weighing 100 pounds or 45 kilograms drinks one shot. He or she will have a BHC of about 0.04. If the same person instead orders a beer and drinks it over the course of an hour, the BAC would be 0.02. That's a huge difference. Now, how would that work for a friend of this person weighing 200 pounds or about 90 kilograms? Well, the shot would result in a BHC of 0.02 and the beer would lead to a BHC of 0.003. Conclusion, more mass leads to a lower BHC. While your liver lowers your BHC further by 0.015 per hour, and importantly, when the rate of consumption exceeds the rate of detoxification, your BHC will continue to rise. Which brings us to a part of the video which might be all too familiar for some of you watching. What symptoms can drinking alcohol cause? Or in other words, at what BHC level can you expect which symptoms? So let's start off mild. A BHC of 0.0, then there's no alcohol in your blood, you're sober, so no symptoms. A BHC of 0.02, then you might start to experience an altered mood, relaxation, euphoria, and maybe a slight loss of judgment. A BHC of 0.05, then you might start to feel uninhibited, have a lower alertness, and definitely an impaired judgment. BHC of 0.08, Someone might experience reduced muscle coordination. 0.010, reduced reaction time, slowed speech, impaired vision, a headache, diarrhea, slow thinking. 0.15, leads to an altered mood, nausea and vomiting, loss of balance and loss of muscle control. 0.15 to 0.30, things start to get serious. Someone might experience confusion, memory gaps, more vomiting and drowsiness. 0.30 to 0.40. This is the stage where alcohol poisoning can kick in, a potentially life-threatening condition with symptoms like confusion, vomiting, seizures, slower and irregular heartbeat, slower or irregular breathing, a blue or pale skin, low body temperature, and loss of consciousness. 
Last stock, BHC over 0.4. As mentioned, this is very dangerous and potentially fatal. You're at risk of a coma and even death from respiratory arrest. As you know now, alcohol stimulates GABA, which inhibits several brain pathways. And in such a high concentration and such high BHC, it can fully inhibit your breathing reflex. If you recognize any of these symptoms, then please contact the medical emergency line, contact your doctor, call 911, because it can be life threatening. And by calling, you can save a life. Now, for those of you now thinking, maybe alcohol is not as safe, not as good as I once thought, well, let me tell you this. The best time to overthink your consumption and to quit would be today. Please contact your doctor and he or she can help you by reducing the amount of alcohol you consume or quitting completely. Which brings us to the long-term health effects consuming a lot of alcohol can cause. Well, as mentioned, it circulates in your bloodstream through all tissue, all organ systems, and therefore it can also cause problems in all these organ systems. Alcohol might affect your gastrointestinal system. It could do so by leading to inflammations of your pancreas or liver, decreasing their functioning, causing abdominal pain, leading to diabetes, and increases your risk for developing liver cancer. It can also damage the cell lining of your gastrointestinal system, mostly your intestines. This can give problems for digesting food, absorbing important nutrients or vitamins. And in time, this damage can cause malnutrition, bloating, diarrhea, painful stools and ulcers with bleeding. The long-term consumption of alcohol can also damage your nervous system. It does so by damaging the nerves in your hands and your feet. This can lead to decreased sensibility as well as tingling and loss of feeling. It can cause mental health problems like anxiety, psychosis or depression. It could lead to brain damage, problems with thinking, regulating emotions or memory. And it could lead to Wernick-Korsakoff syndrome, a brain disorder which mostly affects the memory. Chronic drinking can also cause damage to your heart and your lungs raising your risk for high blood pressure, difficulties pumping blood through your body, fatigue, anemia, stroke, heart attack, and heart failure. Drinking might also cause problems in your sexual health, decreasing your libido, causing erectile dysfunction, decreasing the amount of sex hormones your body makes, giving problems with your menstrual cycle, and even causing potential infertility. Alcohol might also affect your muscle and bone system, leading to a lower bone density, a higher risk of fractures, decreased muscle strength, cramping of your muscles, and ultimately atrophy of the muscles. And lastly, alcohol might affect your immune system. It can increase your risk for several infections like pneumonia, and it can increase your risk for several types of cancer. You might wonder now, is it all bad? Should I completely quit using alcohol? Well, as with anything in life, moderation is key. Although, medically speaking, there are no safe levels of consuming alcohol besides complete abstinence. There are some tips though, which can help you to reduce some of the risk of alcohol if you choose to drink. As mentioned, make sure that you eat before you drink alcohol. Drink plenty of water. For every standard drink you consume, it's a rule to drink one glass of water. This will reduce effects of dehydration, like a headache. Don't go too fast. Drink slowly to give your body plenty of time to process the alcohol, as your liver can only lower your BHC with 0.015 per hour. Don't mix alcohol with other substances. Mixing alcohol with stimulant drugs or caffeine can hide the depressant effect of alcohol, making you drink more than you otherwise might have. Combining alcohol with other substances can also place a huge strain on your liver, further contributing to liver damage. And lastly, maybe most importantly, never drive while intoxicated, even if you feel that you sobered up. You might have still alcohol in your system that can affect your reaction times. Now, I hope this video provided you with an overview of alcohol, how it works, how it travels through a body and the dangers it brings. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. For those of you that really did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe. This will help out the channel tremendously and in return you will get notified each week with a new awesome video. Also check out the playlist in the description with more awesome videos or check out the Instagram, Facebook or TikTok channel with more short for content. I will see you there or I will see you next week with a new awesome video. Thank you so much. Bye bye, stay healthy and don't drink too much. Moderation.